right, all right, all right, YouTubes. Can you hear the excitement in my voice? I'm all fired up. Looking for my wire nuts. Dude, we got actually got a cool little job right here. And I'm going to take you guys in and show you. And, uh, come on. Take a look. He just texted me uh, saying that we have connections from that box. All right, so I got the key to uh, evaporator efficiency control. First time installing one. It comes with the board here. Looks like it's made to go uh, inside the evaporator. You got your sensors. Here's the actual controller. Um, we got this box to put the card in because the little low profile coils I have doesn't have room. So I'm gonna put this on top of the box, but I'll show you what's going on here. Let's get into this. And uh, this one's got two coils. Uh, so it's gonna have evaporator sensor, evaporator sensor, and then air sensor. And we're gonna put that box on top. Control's gonna go out here and we'll get into it a little bit. Um, it's getting everything wired. Let's get on top of the box. I'm going to use this knockout right here. I'm going to get the LP on it to go up. All right, I got my LP in. Right here is, um, here's these different pins for your voltage. This is for 110 volts. This is for 240 volt configuration. There is a, a picture of it on the side. It's gonna be the 120. I had to take this out to get my uh, my LB all hooked up. So I'm gonna be 120 volts. I'm gonna put that one in just like that. This is the cover plate for um, after you get all your wires in. That cover plate's gonna go on like that. And then it's funky, man. For to get in there and service it or troubleshoot it, you're gonna lift it up off the screws and pull it up off if you flush mount it on the box. That's how it is. And this is gonna be for the internet connection that the customer is gonna hook up. Easier to make all my wire connections. Put this cover plate on here. I'm gonna have to do the same with the sensors because I'm gonna run a piece of liquid tight for the sensor, I think, probably on this side. This part of the job is funky monkey. All right, working, everything's connected, working our way back. This is how it mounts on the wall, let's see. All right, there's the two coils. The two coils of blue is my air sensor. And then I got eight coil sensors in each coil. It says to put it in the coldest part of the coil, so we'll see how I make out on that. And uh, I got it right here. I have to program it. So let me get the book. Now this controls your evaporator fans and your defrost and your solenoid valve and all that fun stuff. Evaporator efficiency. Don't worry, I got the book somewhere. Somewhere is here. This is one the guy got online for a hundred bucks, but he went and put a new one in. Installation instructions. So this is the board I put on top of the box. It comes with a couple different relays if you have ECM motors. The ours is just regular. What is your uh, your set point? It comes all flashing zeros. I'm gonna go 0.5 and then I'm gonna go over. So I'm gonna make it 37.5. I'm gonna go seven over. 37.5 enter. I think I have to hold the enter down for three seconds. 
One, two, three. All right, defrost time. Electric, no. Hot gas, no. Air, yes. One, two, three. Wow, how nice and simple. Valve type. Wow. Typical. Oh, mechanical. Yeah, that's me. One, two, three. Smart access disabled. Let me read about that. We'll just leave it like that for now. T4 yeah. auxiliary sensor. I'm not using that. I am not using T4. Oh, there it goes. It, I heard it hit the, the uh, solenoid valves. One, two, three. All right, I had my green sensor hooked up wrong. It went to T4, so now I got it fixed. Learning curve. All right, we're calling forward cooling. Let's see what happens. We got fans, we got solenoids. You can see the valves aren't feeding. This was a used box that was cut and moved. This one here, we already got recovered. Yeah, we're gonna blow a bunch more nitrogen and probably leave it on the vacuum pump overnight and see if we can get it cleaned up. So they get like that and your unit just pumps down, it won't feed refrigerant. The Mr. 45. So this was used, hacked out, reinstalled, and the system's absolutely wet. Um, I think the vacuum pump's gonna have to stay the night running on these to make them work. terminals that go down to the controller and then we found out uh, that's the first one I put in there is a mounting box you can get from Ketotherm that the control would mount to and then all the wires would go into that box but they did say it's okay the way we mounted it too uh, it's, you know it's a learning curve man. it's all new to new to me um, and there's that's how I did the sensors they just came across like that drop in straight relief Uh, we still got to tidy those up too. Some tie wraps and spray foam the holes. And these were all cut and it was left open in the fog. And there was so much moisture in the system, it went vacuum pump 24 hours and then still had to take all the TXVs apart and blow them out with nitrogen again then pull another vacuum and now we got it to where they're working that was a that was a long haul all right so there is a mounting box you can get that goes under here that this would screw onto we got super lucky because of the lb right here it actually you take the four screws and it'll 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 rotate up and you can get to everything super lucky on that box is coming down nicely now yeah and it's yeah there it goes and uh get the schematic and go over the wiring i think it was just the total the way we did it was just five wires five conductors in uh power ground neutral and then we took the hot to the common of the fan relay and then to the common of the liquid line solenoid relay and then liquid line solenoid out fan out and it all hooks up to that connector board so this thing's gonna turn off your evaporator fans and your liquid line solenoid valve when it needs to. Turns the evaporator fans off for saving electricity and it'll do your defrosts uh, with the sensors. 
There's a bunch more I need to learn about it. Um, you could have a whole nother video session with the with the internet connection and going through all the parameters and what it looks like. And this is just on mechanical TXVs. And you can have it hook up to electronic stuff too. All right, all right. Yeah, it's nighttime. So I worked like 10 hours at my day job today and then I'm out here doing this. And sometimes the customer knows more about a product than we do. And uh, this customer, he did his research. He'd been talking to Keto Therm a bunch. And uh, he just let me know that, uh, you know, they had ordered the parts and I got to come in and install it. I'd never put one in before, so I thought I'd make a cool little video for the install. I'm not really going over a lot of programming and stuff. We just did basic programming, set point, uh, which defrost type, which valve type, that kind of thing, basic. Um, then he found out and told me about the kit, you can get the mounting kit, and it, it'll come with 40 foot sensor leads. Uh, if you buy just what we had yes, you know, that I put on this video, it actually was yesterday. It only comes with 15 foot leads. So it's a learning curve. Uh, that's the first one I put in. There's not a lot of those here in town. It's a great product and I'm gonna, uh, so you saw in the box where I had put the connector card and then the controller and I'm gonna show you guys right here on this. If my paper would stop falling, I printed this up offline. And uh, let me get the light turned up. There we go, that's better. All right, so this is the actual card and I think they make it so it'll mount inside of an evaporator. I mounted that in that plastic box on top of the walk-in box and it's super heater it has you know if you have electric defrost all your stuff basically i took i took the power into this which was uh l1 right here neutral and the ground lug and then i took the wire from the liquid line solenoid relay right here on the terminal board to my liquid line solenoid valves. And then I took the other half of the fans right here to my fans. Then I took five wires to the controller, which was the fans, the liquid line solenoid, and the black, white, and green for my 115 volts. Cause that's all I was using on this. And they came over and hooked up here. So you had power that hooked up here on the controller. I took a common wire out of, out of that to here, since I only ran five wires to this from here to here. And then I also jumpered the common down to here for the liquid line solenoid valve. Then I took my liquid line solenoid valve from here that went to here. And I took my fan normally open from here that goes up here to your fans, feeds your fans. And then there's a jumper here that comes in the kit I showed you on the video. And you can get your 220 jumper or your 120 jumper and you pull it out and then you put the right one in. And then that was it and the rest was programming. Um, if you had defrost heaters, you have your relay here for your heaters. If you have an ECM uh, evaporator fan motors, they do give you relays that you'll screw onto the board and then hook your wires up for your ECM motors. Um, but that was basically, basically it for what I had going on this little install. And maybe that'll help you guys out if you come across one of these for installing it. Um, I learned a lot just by putting this in from the customer and, uh, and then doing this. So these guys have great tech support. You can call them on the telephone and talk to the engineers there. Oh, one thing that will happen when you first power this up and you get it all set for cooling, it's going to energize your liquid line solenoid valve. It's not going to energize your evaporator fans right away. And I, I want to find out why that is. Here, I'll turn the camera around and talk to you guys. Um, so when you're trying to uh, charge up the system at startup, you have to wait. It's like 10 or 15 minutes before the fan cycle on for the first time. Uh, that's what I found out on, on uh, the one I put in. And then the fans will get chugging along. But uh, 
There's no evaporator fans when it first fires up, so don't freak out. Um, I don't know if, the, if it's on a timeout or what. I'm going to call them tomorrow and find out why they do that and what the recipe is. I would like to know what their recipe is. Uh, maybe they're trying to start the compressor up without a load in case it's a freezer. Because you could use it for a fridge or a freezer. Um, so it's probably like a generic programming deal. So we'll find out. Hope this video is uh, helpful to everybody. Uh, do me a huge favor. Smash that like button. And if you could, if you haven't yet, please hit the subscribe button. It helps me out a ton. All right? And I'll check you guys on the next one. Boom! All right. Okay, so I cleared up. Um, I got a hold of Keto Therm. And what I was told was why, when I did my first startup, I was saying the fan, the evaporator fans, they come on when the uh, solenoids energized. And it needs to see a two degree differential between the air temperature and the coil temperature. So he told me next time you get in there, just grab the air sensor with your hand. It'll make the temperature go up and your fans will kick on. Um, so it needs to see a two degree differential is what I was told. If you set it up for a freezer, it does all its fan delays pre-programmed in there and all the settings are changeable. And uh, he was telling me you can buy Trenton coils that are all built up with their electronic expansion valves if you want to go that way and their controller already built up onto it. And uh, one good thing with that controller and the reason my customer got that controller I wanted to tell you guys is, is they wanted the BMS on it. They're renting that box out. It's like a kitchen space where they rent out kitchen space and he wants to be able to get alarms if the box is going out because he's responsible for people's product. That controls 700 bucks, but if you think about it, it's not that expensive to have building management system that's going to send you alarms. You can track stuff. You can track your superheat. If you were to buy, if you were to install the pressure and temperature transducers on that, even with the mechanical TXV, it'll give you real time um, superheat readings. You could adjust your superheat if you wanted to do it that way. There's just a lot of stuff that control can do. Um, I hope and I hope the video helps you guys out. I'm learning a lot about it. There's like I said in the video, there's not a lot of these controls out there and I'm learning about it. I'm trying to learn about it and I'm trying to share what I learned with you guys. All right? Get some out there. Let's go.